Hello YouTube, I'm Michael Size, and about two weeks ago some very important information was finally released to the public. And honestly I don't understand why more people aren't talking about this, because to me this is actually really exciting. I don't want to waste your time, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you the bottom line first, and then you can decide if you wanna stay for the explanation. And the bottom line is that based on this newly released information, I have been able to calculate that the LCOE of a fully deployable solar plus storage power plant is $77 per megawatt hour. And if you understand what that means and you understand how to put it in context and you also trust me to perform that calculation, well in that case you can feel free to leave the video, but for everyone else, I want to explain in detail why I find this so exciting. So first of all, what was the info that was actually released? Well, what happened is that Tesla opened up an order page for their Megapack product. And opening up an order page means that they finally have transparent pricing. Now, they've been offering this product for a while, but in the past, the product page simply ended with something that said contact us for pricing. But now that Tesla has opened up an actual order page, you can go ahead and simulate an order and see exactly how much that would cost. And this is the first time when we're getting actual first-hand information about this stuff. We did have estimates before this, but I would argue, and I would have argued in the past, that these estimates should basically be ignored. Some of these estimates came from experts, which I'm just gonna put this on screen. Some of these estimates came from political propaganda, and some of these estimates came from using commercial prices of batteries that were not actually meant for grid storage. Like, I'm sure you can make a mega pack by linking together a bunch of iPhone batteries, but that's not gonna be the most cost effective solution. You need a purpose built product, and the mega pack is that purpose built product, and its price has finally been revealed. And we're gonna be able to use this price to calculate the LCOE that I was talking about at the beginning. But before we go there, what is the LCOE? LCOE stands for Levelized Cost of Electricity. And it's a standardized way to compare the profitability of different technologies. Now, thanks to it being standardized, it means that we can get very accurate information about where all the technologies sit today. And I can grab that chart and put it on screen right now. And by looking at this chart, you can quickly notice two important things. First of all, renewables have the lowest LCOE on this chart. And in fact, renewables have the lowest LCOE of any energy source in human history. This is a very well established fact and by the way this chart does not take into account subsidies. This is great for renewables and for decarbonization but LCOE is also a very simple metric. It takes into account all the economic costs but it doesn't take into account any of the other features of the technology. And one shortfall of this is that like yes sure solar is the cheapest form of energy in human history but solar only shines during the day, which means that you can't go and install a bunch of solar and expect that to completely replace a coal power plant. In order for renewables to be able to replace a conventional power plant, you need some form of storage, and that's exactly what we're talking about today. Now, when it comes to storing electricity, there are like a million solutions, and all of them bad. There are some that stand out such as pumped hydro, but pumped hydro can only be built in certain places, and other technologies have similar drawbacks. The one technology that doesn't have any serious drawbacks in terms of its physical characteristics is batteries. But the problem with batteries has historically been the insanely high costs. Between 2010 and today, the upfront cost of batteries has dropped by about a factor of 10, and the longevity of batteries has increased by about a factor of 100. In other words, in the last 10 years, batteries have gotten about a thousand times more profitable. And this is why this value for the LCOE that I've calculated, this is why it's in the 2 digit range rather than the 4 digit range, which is what I was actually expecting. For the first time in history, batteries are actually a competitive solution for some sort of grid scale energy storage and if we look at the LCOE chart again you can see that $77 per megawatt hour is below the LCOE of coal. Even by itself this data point is very important. Coal is the most polluting fossil fuel so any technology that can help reduce it is definitely welcome. 
LCOE is hard knuckle capitalism and the fact that solar plus storage beats coal in LCOE means that if the only thing you care about is profitability, you literally have no reason to build a coal power plant over building a solar plus storage power plant. Now this doesn't actually mean that coal will be gone tomorrow and there might still be some reasons to actually build new coal power plants, but the reasons aren't economic. The advantage that coal still has is that it's quicker to build in a pinch. If your electricity demand goes up suddenly, it's much quicker to build a coal power plant and even the ones that already exist are typically overbuilt, which means that instead of building solar plus storage, you can put more coal into the existing power plants. If you go to the Megapack order page, you can see that the product is actually sold out through to the end of 2022, and Elon even mentioned this on the company's latest conference call. We also know that solar panels are sort of in a similar situation. The existing factories are running as fast as possible, and new factories are being built, again, as fast as humanly possible. These industries have figured out how to reduce the cost, now they still have to figure out how to scale up production. Thankfully though, scaling up production at this point is not a matter of if, it's simply a matter of when. And given that demand for these products is so strong, it means that they can fund themselves simply through their commercial success. This is not a science experiment, this is not some capitalist venture, this is a well-established industry that can pretty much only go up from here. Now I'm sure you've noticed that combined cycle natural gas is still cheaper than my storage plus solar solution, and that could definitely be a problem. In reality though, if you take a good look at the LCOE chart for solar, and if we also bring in a cost chart for batteries, you can see that these two technologies have displayed extremely aggressive and extremely sustained declining cost curves. There's really no good reason to assume that these costs are just going to stop here. So sure, the LCOE is still higher than combined cycle gas, but as far as I can tell, this is also a matter of when and not a matter of if. So anyway, now that you understand all of this, I'm going to share with you the methodology that I've used for calculating this LCOE and you can feel free to scrutinize it in the comments. Now, the method that I used is actually quite standard. The main difference between what I've calculated and what I've seen most other people do is that I have not taken the storage in isolation. I've actually assumed that the storage would be on the same side as the solar panels. And the way in which I've assumed that this power plant would work is that the energy from the solar panels would go straight into the batteries and then the batteries would sell the energy to the grid in whatever way the company finds most profitable. I've decided to do it like this because a power plant built in this way could actually replace literally any other. It could run as a base load, it could run as load following, it could run as a peaker power plant, it's gonna run as whatever it finds most profitable. But physically speaking, this is perfectly able to replace any other sort of power plant. So the formula I need to get to in the end looks something like this. What you have here is the levelized cost of energy of the solar panels multiplied by the efficiency of the storage solution plus the levelized cost of storage. Getting the first two is actually quite easy. For the LCOE of the solar, I've just taken the value from the table. And for the efficiency of the storage, I've assumed 90%, though in reality I imagine the figure would be closer to 95%, but in this situation I'm comfortable with being conservative. Calculating the LCOS is a bit more challenging, but broadly what we need to do is we need to take the lifetime cost of the batteries and then divide that by the number of megawatt hours that the batteries will be able to store and release before they reach the end of their life. The cost is obviously the simplest, you just go to Tesla's order page and you put in an order for a thousand megapacks. That's the highest order that the web page allows and it gets you the lowest price per unit. And the thousand megapacks cost about 850 million dollars. You also need to account for the cost of the maintenance. And Tesla provides that as well and if you calculate the cost for the maintenance over 30 years, you end up with about 150 million dollars, giving you a total of 1 billion dollars of cost for 3 gigawatt hours of megapacks over 30 years. And I'll get back to that 30 years later. For the cycled energy, the calculation goes something like this. 30 years at one cycle per day is about 11,000 cycles. 
if we assume that by the end of these 11,000 cycles the battery will have 80% capacity retention and if we assume linear degradation you can just plug this all into a formula and you get this result. The question of course is where did I come up with those figures? How did I get 80% capacity retention after 11,000 cycles? And the answer is that I've made some assumptions and as you're going to see my assumptions are actually quite conservative. First of all, I've assumed that the Megapack uses LFP, which is not confirmed by Tesla, but it is considered kind of an established fact. So first of all, I'm gonna quote to you an article from Tesla Rati, which says that, quote, Can a core genuity analyst Jed Dorsheimer recently noted that Tesla has shifted to cobalt-free lithium iron phosphate batteries for its flagship energy storage product, the Megapack, end quote. This is our first bit of evidence, but even outside of the claims of analysts, the fact is that it would be pretty dumb for Tesla to be using anything else. LFP is very large and very heavy, which makes it unsuitable for most EV models. Tesla uses it in some cars, but most of Tesla's models would be literally impossible to build with LFP. Volume and weight is not a concern for stationary storage, which means that stationary storage can reap the full benefits of LFP with none of the downsides. The benefits of LFP is very low cost and very high cycle life. Besides the physical characteristics, you also have the problem of raw material availability. Most of Tesla cells are made primarily of nickel and the simple fact is that nickel simply isn't being mined fast enough. Tesla has commented on multiple occasions on how hard of a time they're having securing nickel supply. This problem simply does not exist with iron. LFP of course stands for lithium iron phosphate and these batteries are made primarily of iron. And in terms of availability, iron is available in basically limitless quantities. All in all, you can see that using anything other than LFP in the mega pack would be kind of a stupid decision. And combined with the claims of the analyst, this makes me very confident in assuming that the mega pack is made of LFP. So once we know the chemistry, sourcing figures for the cycle life is not actually all that difficult. First of all, Tesla's only known supplier of LFP batteries is the company CATL, and in a recent shareholder letter, CATL claims that the cycle life of their LFP batteries is between 12,000 and 15,000 cycles. Now, they don't mention with what kind of capacity retention, but we can get an idea from that by looking at some other independent tests. And you can look at this article for instance which talks about the test results of another company that also produces stationary LFP storage solutions. The results of their tests are 65% capacity retention after 28,000 cycles and 83% capacity retention after 10,000 cycles. As I said 30 years at one cycle per day is about 11,000 cycles and if we take my assumption of 11,000 cycles with 80% capacity retention and we try to fit it in between those two test results you can see that it fits in quite nicely. So anyway you take these values you calculate the cycled energy you divide you get the LCOS you add to the previous thing I'm not gonna read formulas out loud and you get about $77 per megawatt hour. Given my assumptions in this video I would argue that my estimate for the LCOE is actually quite conservative and in any case this is not what's actually gonna matter if you're actually gonna buy a mega pack today batteries are highly capable devices and there are all sorts of services that batteries can provide better than any other technology currently on the grid as a result a grid scale battery installed today in 2021 can bank a lot more profit by providing these services than it can by just turning solar into a base load this is why the batteries are sold out and this is why Tesla only offers 15 years of warranty. They really have no reason to try to cater to dumb applications when smart applications right now can provide way more profits. It will be interesting to see exactly how this space evolves but I imagine it's going to be quite a few years before a power plant like the one I've modeled becomes reality by which time it will be cheaper than combined cycle gas as well. The important part is that it is possible and it is economically viable, even with the technology of today, even with parts that you can go and take off the shelf 
right now in 2021. In terms of science and engineering, the problem of the emissions associated with the production of electricity is basically solved. There are a ton of interesting technologies and developments in this space and I'm going to talk about them in future videos, so if you don't want to miss that, the subscribe button is just below the like button. In any case, thanks for watching.